I'd like to introduce Mike Scholes. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today and especially to be introduced with so many Trump adjectives. Uh, <laughs> I think the commissioners were on the cutting edge and gave uh, Trump a lot of good ideas in terms of appointments uh, because it, it seems that Trump is appointing a lot of general officers and uh, our commissioners got that uh, idea about a, a year ago. So. It's, uh, it's an honor to actually be here and to be able to, to speak to you today. I think John has asked me uh, for 14 months, uh, you know, when I'm going to come brief to you. It just hasn't worked out. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, in terms of God's time, the best time to be able to do it is today. So uh, it's an honor to actually be here and be able to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, you know, uh, John kind of gave me an idea of what to brief. Uh, and some of it, some of you have already been in some of the uh, you know, speeches or, or briefings that I've already given, uh, which uh, I'm going to do a little bleed over on that just because uh, most of you haven't, and I, and I definitely want to do justice and cover some of those areas of, of why I'm here and a little bit about my background and, and what brings me to the, the wonderful state of Kansas in, in this time in my life, because I think that's important. Uh, thing and so actually the number one question that I'm asked uh, when I come here, uh, but uh, but but without going any further, I definitely want to you know introduce Jessica, my wife. She is my soulmate. She is my best friend. Um, I, I I would not be here in front of you today, or it wouldn't be the success that I have enjoyed and been blessed with without her. Uh, she truly is my rock, and, and I rely on her, and the family obviously relies on her tremendously. So uh, that's why she's here today. <laughs> so in terms of, of talking to you a little bit about myself, once I get through all the mushy stuff, I'll get into a little bit about the county, county and what I've been working on really the last 14 months. Uh, talk to you about the important things. I'll spend a lot of time on an organizational chart. Uh, that's who I am. Uh, I live in org charts. I've been a lot of assignments throughout the years where I've either, either created a, a, you know, for, for instance, my brigade command was a new command. I created the brigade from the internal out. So a lot of the techniques and procedures and policies I use to do that, uh, I brought a lot of that with me. It gave me a skill set. Also uh, dealing with the NATO assignment and working in an international environment with 31 different nations on my staff. I had to bring a lot of that into it too. So a lot of that kind of dominates my personality and my skill set. And I brought that certainly into Cedric County to be able to, uh, to help me uh, push this county forward to the next place. Uh, certainly Bill Buchanan was there for 24 years. And whenever you have a leader in an organization for that long of a time, you're talking almost a generational uh, leader. Uh, the organization certainly takes up that leadership style and that organizational leadership style. So, you know, for me coming in as a challenge of 24 year leader is to replace them and do it effectively and, and, and take it to that next level. Because you can always do it better. Uh, another leader could replace me, which I have to be training that next leader. Uh, can always come in, replace me, and take it to an even higher plateau. So first off, you know, where to begin is, is you know, I'm going to put up here uh, my two grandfathers. Uh, on the right uh, is uh, on my mother's side, uh, and on the left is my father's uh, side. It's actually uh, up here is Tech Sergeant Alvin Lee Scholes. My name is Michael Lee Scholes, and certainly I take my name after him. He's my namesake. My, a lot of the qualities I took after him, that's him in, in World War II. Um, and I, uh, you know, I used to follow him around. Uh, he used to, you know, my dad was deployed so much. Uh, I used to spend a lot of my holidays and summers uh, with my grandfather. Uh, and I used to uh, sit, sit on the tractor with him. When he uh, got out of the military and went back to Copper Hill, Tennessee, and became a coal, uh, copper miner, uh, he, once he got out of that, he became a a public housing uh, manager, superintendent. 
And so he's uh, worked in the public arena uh, working for the community for the rest of his life. And so when I, whenever I would go there with him, I honestly went to work with him. And, uh, and I got a lot of traits from him, just walking around, seeing how he interacted with uh, everybody in the community. Everybody loved him, of course. Uh, I'm not saying everybody loves me when I walk around the community, but, but certainly, uh, but he, he is certainly my namesake, and, and my father even says I took a, a lot uh, after him. Uh, and on the right is, uh, is, is my other grandfather, Wayne Mabussey, who was uh, World War I uniform, obviously there. My mom was uh, born late in life, uh, but he was in World War I. And, uh, and really, you can trace back my lineage all the way. We had a general officer uh, uh, on my mom's side in the Revolutionary War uh, and served for General Washington in Georgia. Actually, again, we have a letter that was deeded land for him because of his job as a Revolutionary War General working for General Washington. So it actually, uh, you know, military is in my blood and uh, service and service to the community, service to this nation. Is, uh, is almost a family business for me. And so certainly with my father, <coughs> Major General retired Edison East Goals, uh, he uh, certainly took up the, uh, the cause and he's a true patriot and he is my hero. He is uh, really uh, my, my father. Um, and when he retired, uh, although I don't know if he really ever officially retired, but he uh, continues uh, to work. He lives in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, with my mom, and uh, and he, uh, he truly is my hero. Now I've had the luxury, uh, uh, on some days good, some days bad, of actually serving in his chain of command, uh, especially in the 82nd Airborne Division, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but uh, he uh, married my mom, met her in uh, at North Georgia College, which is my alma mater. Uh, I graduated at North Georgia College is one of the senior senior military colleges in the United States. Uh, VMI, Citadel, Norwich, uh, Virginia, uh, Polytechnic, uh, and uh, I know I'm missing one, Texas A&M are the other uh, six uh, senior military colleges. It's from those senior military colleges, if you graduate, because it's a, it's a, it's a military school, uh, you actually are guaranteed active duty. And so that was really the place for me after a failed attempt at University of Tennessee for a couple of years of uh, trying to pull out a de decent GPA. Uh, my dad's alma mater, uh, my, my dad kind of gave me the go to war to go or go to jail kind of a speech. <laughs> and uh, I ended up going to North Georgia, North Georgia College to get my commission because I really did want to go and, and get a commission. But, but that's my dad and mom. He was the uh, distinguished military graduate from North Georgia, top of his class, physics major. Uh, I don't get any of the math skills that he has. Uh, he is truly a brilliant. Uh, he, he actually even uses used the slide roll. You know, I used to play with that as a kid and remember going in his Foot Locker and you know, going, man, that's kind of cool, but uh, I, I could never use it. He even got a graduate degree in uh, operational research from uh, Naval Post Graduate School. So he is truly one of those big brain kind of guys uh, that I never did inherit. but. But, uh, but I did hopefully inherit uh, some of his leadership skills because I used to walk around uh, with him at his units whenever he wasn't deployed and I truly did uh, notice how he interacted with the sergeants, the sergeants major, uh, the, the battalion commanders and even in, uh, in, in a wartime condition I watched him how he operated in his talk and how he dealt with his commanders, his 06s and 05s. Uh, and, and I took a lot of that with me w when I would go back and command my troops. Uh, he, I was born in Bad Tolz, Germany. This is a picture of the 10th Special Forces compound. If any of you have ever been in Bad Tolz, Germany, it's in Garmisch. Uh, it, uh, at that time, the 10th, uh, the 10th Mountain was really working uh, in uh, some areas, obviously because of the Cold War. Uh, at the time I was born, he was down on Mount Yerevan uh, out of uh, Armenia doing patrolling against the Soviets. Uh, he was, that's a, the, it's a mountain uh, unit, 10th Special Forces was a mountain unit, so he did ski patrols at whole nine yards. But 
uh, throughout his life, he was an infantry, special forces, ranger kind of uh, guy. I ended up being an armor kind of guy, uh, which he always, uh, uh, a little bit of a chagrin there, but he, uh, he was very proud of me, and no matter where I went. He's the one that did it to me. He took me to work with him one day, and I got up on a tank, fired it, and I was hooked. Um, <laughs> So uh, he tried to get me to turn around once. Uh, when I graduated from airborne school, we were running off the DZ because he jumped my first jump with me and my last jump. We were running off the DZ and he goes, so when are you going to ranger school? I was like, I'm not going to ranger school. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tanker school. But, uh, but he's always uh, tried to push me to the infantry ranks. But he, the problem was he's, he let me go to work with them and I saw what they did. It just a, what, what wasn't for me. So. I think uh, Congressman uh, Pompeo and I share the armor uh, lineage and, and I'm certainly happy about that. So I've served on every tank there is in the U.S. Uh, military, uh, including some that you probably have never heard of. So uh, That's me, that's my mom and my two sisters. Uh, if you notice uh, on the right, my oldest sister Kim, yes, she didn't like the fact that, uh, that my sister and I were even born. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that, that look on her face, she probably still carries today, uh, but, uh, but, but she, she actually, uh, she does love us, uh, but uh, she, she, she lets us know every now and then that, that uh, there were times there that, that, that she wished she was the only child. Um, my father, again, has been an integral part of my career. Uh, he has promoted me. He not only commissioned me. Uh, but I've had him pin me because he is a superior officer. Um, I've had him pin me any time I was getting promoted. There was one time where I, I couldn't, uh, and that was when I was a captain because our assignments, he was overseas and, and I was uh, uh, at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I couldn't get him to promote me, so almost jinxed me. But, but, uh, but I really try to get him to pin me because it means so much to me for him to be able to do that. Uh, and he really loves it too, uh, but this is uh, us in uh, Desert Storm before we were crossing the, the flot, uh, the forward line of troops when we were going to attack into Iraq. He stopped by uh, from the talk to, uh, to pin me to first lieutenant, uh, and then we got right back into it and, and went up to the border to, to start the, the war. Uh, but he has been a tremendous part of my uh, career. <clears throat> this is him. He actually is... Um, a Ranger Hall of Famer, which is a very big deal. Uh, matter of fact, uh, him and General McCaffrey, uh, he, they were in the same class. Uh, actually, we're in the, the, the theater there at uh, Infantry School, uh, Follow Me Center. And, um, he, uh, he has been a, a big uh, deal in the infantry, uh, airborne, Ranger Special Forces uh, career path. So he's known out there. So it's almost one of those daunting things in any unit I went in. I was constantly competing. Are you Ed Skulls' son? <laughs> yes, uh, but I'm a tanker. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, but he has been, again, a good big part of That's my whole family, uh, including my sisters and their husbands and, and my uh, nieces. Uh, but uh, uh, that's my father, Briefing General, uh, or uh, SecDef Cheney. Uh, before Desert Storm. He was responsible for the defense of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Uh, and he had a, a big, uh, obviously, uh, impact on the operations and how they commenced uh, in his role as the DCG of 18th Airborne Corps at the time. <coughs> That's me. Uh, uh, Private First Class uh, Mike Scholes, uh, after I uh, I uh, graduated high school, I reported in, flew to Fort Knox, Kentucky, and started my military career. Uh, it uh, was one of those things where my father uh, actually swore me in uh, to the National Guard, uh, and it was one of the best decisions I could make. I never really knew about the National Guard, didn't know really what they did until he signed me in. It was an M48A5 uh, tank unit uh, out of Parkton, North Carolina. Uh, but all through my college career, uh, I stayed as a, an active member of the National Guard and was one of the best things I could ever do. Not only did it teach me a lot about service, uh, but it was such a, an important thing for me to get leadership experience at a level. I made Buck Sergeant, went to NCO Academy at Fort Stewart, 
went to airborne school, did all those things I could, almost uh, as much uh, active duty time as I could get in schools and training I could get in order to be a better leader, uh, I was all over it. I asked for it, I volunteered for it, but it shaped me not only in school, but it shaped me how I would, would act as a leader in the military. And, and matter of fact, it was one thing that my platoon sergeant in the 82nd told me. He said, I appreciate what you did in terms of becoming a buck sergeant and going to the NCO Academy. You, you just don't understand how many lieutenants we get that are so new and don't understand it, but your NCO time is really helping and uh, has been a tremendous effect on the platoon. And I took that and I have used that throughout my career that whenever I could get uh, that next degree, that next training opportunity, I would always volunteer. Because uh, so much in the military is about timing, timing, timing. But if you don't have the education, you don't have the experience uh, to actually propel you for that assignment, you're not going to get it. And it certainly had a positive effect on my career. <coughs> That's. Uh, that's me as a battalion commander, uh, kind of jumping forward a little bit. My assignments uh, throughout my career, especially after leaving uh, Fort Bragg and going to Fort Knox, uh, I couldn't jump out of airplanes anymore. So in Fort Knox, uh, Kentucky, I actually lived off close, post in a place called Flaherty. And I lived right next to a huge fire station, a volunteer fire station in Kentucky. They really live and breathe off the volunteer fire, fire departments. And so I joined that fire department, got certification, got my EMT certification, and I was constantly looking for that adrenaline, adrenaline rush. And enjoyed it, was part of the community, learned how to do that, uh, and, and, and that served me well and even serves me well today, especially with the fire and the, and the uh, sheriff's department um, and, uh, and the EMS uh, service. Uh, but also, uh, I, I, that was, at that particular point in time, I'm actually uh, talking to a, a unit uh, that experienced nine casualties, KIAs in, in Afghanistan or in Iraq at the time. Uh, and, and that's my daughter, Reagan, who really is a, um, she not only loves her daddy, but she really likes theatrics and she likes being the center of attention. <laughs> Uh, but, but in that case, uh, she was certainly doing that. So it's a sweet photo uh, that, that I love showing because that is such a part of me, uh, family and, and my kids. Uh, but that was a tough day for me to actually talk to those families and be able to, to, to uh, give them a, a sort of perspective of, of what their, their uh, spouses were going through, what they can expect, uh, and uh, to let them know that we were there for them. Uh, a few days after that, I actually ended up down in Katrina uh, for the, uh, for, to New Orleans for Hurricane Katrina. I actually flew in on a, a Chinook and landed at the Superdome to take over the operations from uh, the authorities there because they had just been hit by a major storm. Uh, I could set up their operations center from my perspective, that's what I did. Uh, and I was able to jump them out of the Superdome and actually set up an operations center to start receiving requests. <laughs> in that assignment, in those assignments, again, I, I, I provide a unique niche in that a lot of military officers don't get to do that, but my experience has led me to a position where I could do that. I did a lot of national special security events. I did uh, 14 months, I worked with the Secret Service to actually put all, pull off a G8 economic summit. I was a lead military planner for that and actually established new SECDEF policy, DOD policy that we use today uh, in regards to a dual status commander. So one uh, National Guard general officer or one active duty general officer could actually command both sides, Title 10 and Title 32, for any given NSSE emergency or any given catastrophic type of emergency where you need that kind of capability in any state at any time. Uh, so that exists even today and it's called the dual status commander. But again, I don't say that to be braggadocious, I just say it as a means to that's where my experience is and that's where I've really been used a lot uh, in, in my time. Uh, this is my brigade command <coughs> in which I served uh, and again a lot of NSSEs because I developed that for the SECDEF, I was used for a lot of uh, national special security events. 
This is actually the De Democratic National Convention. I led a task force that would respond in the, in the event of a Seaburn attack, or chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear attack. Uh, and this is uh, my brigade staff that I used to do that. Uh, but, but really it was a dual mission. Not only did I have to prepare my troops, about 3,600 or so uh, soldiers and airmen uh, for war, uh, I also had to pre prepare them for this mission, which is a Homeland Response Force mission, uh, to be able to prepare and respond in the United States uh, for any type of an event. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna jump forward a little bit. This is the, my last uh, unit I served in uh, overseas uh, for NATO. Uh, I was the chief of staff uh, for uh, a division-sized headquarters for NATO in the Balkans, but really it covered everywhere from the Balkans down to Greece. I had units in uh, Thessaloniki, Greece, uh, for a mission in that uh, particular part of Europe. Uh, the important thing I learned out of that assignment uh, was, uh, again, it's a, close to a 10,000 personnel unit. Uh, but, but really dealing with a dynamic environment, diverse staff, uh, working with five, uh, mainly Quint ambassadors, uh, and the UN and OSCE and European Union, all that, uh, that really helped me in terms of preparing me for, for Sedgwick County, believe it or not, and, and working with the, the commissioners and working with our stakeholders. Uh, it's me giving up the flag, but that's really why I do it. That's why I'm here. I'm here for my family. Uh, I chose to actually chose and got to choose uh, where to live when I retired. Uh, I was offered a position in uh, Stuttgart uh, in Yukon, and I chose to come here in, w for, in Wichita instead uh, based off of getting the job as a county manager. Uh, it is something uh, I did because of my family. Uh, this is me coming home from a, a deployment. Uh, that is my son when I swore him in uh, as uh, a private in the U.S. Army. Uh, he actually deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, had an extremely hard deployment, especially in Afghanistan, where somebody on his tank crew was killed while he was driving. Uh, he was able to punch through the ambush and get him back to the FOB, uh, but it had an effect on him. It had an effect on him and had an effect on our family had effect on my wife, me, we all handled it a little bit differently. Um, but that's really where I kind of started going, okay, you know, I've kind of done what I wanted to do, you know, maybe I need to focus my priority a little bit different. Uh, my family, really, my three pillars have always been my faith, my family, my army. My, my family always uh, seems to two or three and, you know, I kind of had to rearrange and uh, it, you know, for me, it was just getting time to, to reprioritize a little bit. So that's what I did by moving here. Uh, this is my daughter uh, during my deployment, actually getting married. Uh, this is a uh, homecoming. This is the effect. This is me leaving for deployment. This is one of the hardest days uh, you can imagine. Uh, those are some of the best days. Uh, but but there are so many soldiers, sailors, airmen. Uh, Coasties out there that on a day-to-day -day basis go through this every single day. So please be thinking of them and some of you are experience that, experiencing that right now. And me coming home. So enough on that, enough, enough of the mushy stuff. Uh, hopefully that perspective gives you a little bit about what makes me tick. We live up in Bel Air, Mayor Bel Air is here. Uh, uh, we live up there a lot because of Sunrise Christian Academy. We actually found the school first and then found where to live. It just happened to be in the best city in, in Sedgwick County. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and my wife actually went to Sunrise one day and volunteered and ended up now she's working there. She is the assistant to the headmaster there, Dr. Lindstad. Uh, jack of all trades, budget analyst, personal assistant, you name it, she does it uh, just based off of her personality and drive. Uh, and she is, uh, uh, I would say, loving it, uh, although she got used to being a trophy wife for a while. Um, <laughs> Uh, so let me get into uh, a little bit about the county now. So that's really why you're here as an update. I know Commissioner Peter John will be here next uh, at the next uh, meeting. 
uh, and he will be able to, to, to helpfully fill your rucksack with all the county information that you need to take into the new year. Uh, so hopefully our, uh, our briefings dovetail each other nicely. Uh, the first thing is, is really last year when I came in here after 90 days, I told the commissioners that uh, I would give them a 90 day letter, basically some priorities that I saw as a leader coming into this organization new, the things that I wanted to focus on. And so these were the five, uh, six points that I gave him, gave them in, in order to, to, uh, to move the uh, county forward. The first one is strategic planning. The county hasn't had a strategic plan since 1994. Uh, and so for me, uh, in, in organizations, I find a strategic plan very useful. Uh, not only does it tell everybody um, where you're wanting to go, but it helps assist them on how to get there. Uh, and that is an important thing in any organization, whether it's a, a governmental organization or a Fortune 500 company. I think a, a strategic plan is absolutely necessary. Uh, along with that, based off of me being a different leader than Bill Buchanan, uh, I felt the need to do some organizational change. Uh, for me, I learn things differently. I receive information differently. Uh, Bill Buchanan had about, about eight uh, stovepipes uh, that he dealt with, and being there 24 years probably could do that. Uh, for me, I have found that uh, that isn't uh, uh, helpful in running an organization, uh, at least on how I run the organization, so I needed uh, to do a little bit of an organizational t change. Uh, and on the left, you kind of see what that looks like, and I'll explain that a little more. Uh, we, a budget process, a budget process, obviously with the tax lid and everything that's going on with that is going to change a little bit. I, I wanted the, the need to actually pull it to the left a little bit more to provide more time, to give us more time uh, to actually put a budget together, and so we did that and actually had a meeting today about the next uh, 2018 budget. So the process is already starting. Uh, public information, uh, communications was an important aspect of that. One of the first decisions I made was in the communications realm, and I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, performance management, cultural change, and, and talent management, two areas that are important to any organization. You know, obviously, uh, four pillars of leadership in, in running an organization uh, is leadership, is training, is a, is a, doing actually recommend uh, you know doing appraisals a discipline uh, but also uh, rewarding you know actually you know supporting them uh, and typically organizations don't usually have a good uh, uh, a good way of actually rewarding their employees that was something I really want to look at hard but also the appraisal side of it organizations at least that I have been in, do a terrible do job at appraising people. And we have this, this long form uh, that really becomes perfunctory that they usually pull out from last year's, change the dates, and you know how it goes. Uh, and so I really wanted to clean that up to actually make it a useful product to be able to appraise, to either reward or provide some direction for employees to see how they can improve. We developed a new uh, mission statement based off the strategic planning process, and this is it. This is uh, probably rolling it out for one of the first times. Uh, and as you see, it uh, contains a lot of the tenants. Uh, as uh, the, the chairman said, you know, really f with five commissioners and getting them around the table, which is very important in the strategic planning process, is actually getting all the, the stakeholders, getting all the players involved in the organization, all the leadership, to actually getting them around the table and, and putting together a mission statement is very complex. You know, everybody has their own ideals. It's very diverse. I mean. Uh, uh, the Commissioner Ranzau compared to, uh, you know, Commissioner Peter John or even Commissioner Norton. Everyone has their own things that they, but really when you brief uh, the, the SWAT, the, the strengths, weaknesses, observations, threats, etc., when you brief them that and you tell them, you really look at where our mission is and what we're trying to do, in the end you come out with a mission statement. In the military we do mission statements almost on a daily basis for operations, etc. 
So it's nothing new. It's really the five W's of, of why we're here. It's an important component of strategic planning. Uh, my focus areas that come out of the strategic planning process after you develop the mission statement really is the safe and secure communities, public services. This is likely to change a little bit. You know, once we finish the process, by the end of this year, we'll have the final draft completed. Um, communications and engagement in an effective government organization. All that to say that is what is a reflective of all that that I just told you. Now let me explain it to you a little bit. An organizational structure uh, right now for us, and I put up here as a guide, cogwheels. Because all the things that I just told you work together in terms of uh, an effective running organization. And so I've put that up there, whether it's the budget, um, or whether it's the uh, the strategic plan or whether it's the organization functional layout, whatever that is, all those things work together in order to have an effective organization. And that's reflective up here. And what I've tried to show you up here are those strategic uh, priorities. Uh, and those are outlined inside this organizational structure if you understand it. So first let me talk through communications. This is communications and engagement. Uh, you have safe and secure environment, you have public service or public services, and then you have the effective government organization. So for me, I took eight stovepipes, actually nine because Public Works was its own stovepipe. Uh, with the commissioner's uh, approval and passing it on the BOCC, that is now underneath me. And so I've taken nine stovepipes and actually have collapsed it down into four functional aligned uh, departments. Uh, and that is Public Works, and that is an assistant county manager because he has multiple functions, which is public safety, code enforcement, and emergency management. And then I have an assistant county manager for public services, which includes health and human services and everything else underneath this chart. And then I have a deputy county manager. One of the important things, as I told you, communications and information management and how that works within an organization is such an important component in any organization that I felt the need to actually put a DCM in here, give this guy a, a, a dual title of chief of staff to help support that synergy between departments just by the very nature of assigning a chief of staff role to that person is going to create that synergy just by that design. And then finding a tenacious kind of uh, type personality to be able to take that uh, is the other component of that. But for me, that deputy county manager is all the effective government functions, the pure guts of the functions on how things run, uh, including uh, CFO, uh, HR, and GSA is what I'm calling it. If any of you know military, GSA sounds somewhat familiar. But uh, here we have information technology services, operational support services, and then the strategic planning. I added another component to that. And so all this being said, this changes within the last month has, has been completed. Uh, I've added an internal performance auditor to that. So I've created a new position to support this. Uh, what that internal performance auditor would do, just by the very nature of it, if any of you have ever dealt with them, they actually help support the processes, procedures, systems, uh, you know, policies on how these departments operate. So this particular person who has a lot of experience in DOE, et cetera, uh, big agencies, her sole job is to actually go out there for me to help support those uh, directors to look inside their departments and look at those processes, procedures, policies, et cetera, to, to make sure we have effective and efficient organizations. That is important. Uh, that's not only important in succeeding in that priority, but it's also important for those directors to have that capability to find those efficiencies to be able to support um, operating their departments. Uh, and, and really, she, this uh, 
A lady uh, has been on the ground for uh, only a month, but her first day she was thrown into some very complex uh, situations to help start that process. So she's going to be going throughout the organization and looking for efficiencies and using almost Lean Six Sigma as a guide to be able to do that. But she is certified in that. She has been doing that for most of her life, uh, has a wealth of experience in that, and is going to be a tremendous asset for that. Uh, but like I said, the deputy county manager is the one that's going to be operating that. He is actually sitting back there, Tom Golden. Uh, any of you uh, need to get to know Tom, uh, he is tenacious. Uh, he is a, a rock star in terms that we are lucky to have him. Uh, but in my mind, I was looking for somebody uh, who actually had some type of experience either in HR or uh, in finance uh, because that is one of their critical functions underneath that deputy county manager. Uh, in, in the best of all worlds, I would like somebody who understood what a chief of staff did. Uh, best of all worlds, I'd kind of like somebody who actually maybe have some aviation experience because he has economic development underneath him. Uh, and in, in Wichita, aviation is huge, uh, and we sit in a lot of meetings where aviation is talked. So I always find myself uh, in some of those meetings going, man, I wish I had an aviator here. So uh, I also needed that right personality. Uh, I needed somebody who actually understood uh, how information management runs. Uh, and how that works out, and, and lo and behold, uh, Tom Golden ended up being the, the choice and selection uh, that I chose, and he has all of those qualities, including aviation in terms that he's a rotary wing and fixed wing aviator, so he's got those qualities going for him. He's actually provided a lot of perspective, even just yesterday with the transaction team with the uh, Greater Wichita Partnership. Uh, to his right is Tim Kaufman. He is the Assistant County Manager for Public Services. Tim. <laughs> Tim's no stranger to county government. Again, uh, perfect uh, person for, the, for that particular posting in that he was uh, the director of HHS for the longest time, uh, but he actually has supported almost everything under him, including expiration plates in which he had to go over and support them. Uh, uh, during a time where they lost their, uh, their leader, and he actually ran that uh, organization and, and helped support their board over there. So he has a lot of experience, not only uh, in those departments, but in this county. He's been here for a very long time. But the perfect personality for that, you know, including I'm using him really heavy right now with Zoo. Uh, we're in the midst of doing Zoo director search, and he is the perfect <coughs> man for that position to be able to take uh, intent and to be able to support that. Uh, also, everybody knows Tom Stoltz, uh, Deputy Police Chief uh, here for the longest time, then Director of MABCD. Who better than to actually lead the Department of Public Safety, Code Enforcement, and Emergency Management? One of the important functions in there is emergency management. Uh, that's the only piece that Tom needs uh, to, to get some support on. Uh, but really, Tom, if anybody in here knows Tom, yeah, he, he understands it, uh, and, and if he doesn't, he, he takes the time to read about it and, and gets down into the details to help understand it. Uh, but uh, he is the perfect choice for that position, and he has done just great things in the short time. He's been in there, only been in there about two months, uh, but he has done great things to be able to support that. And then David Spears. David Spears has been the dir Director of Public Works for about 33, 34 years now, as most, almost as long as I was in the military. Uh, so he knows public works and knows how to function with that. Uh, but those two are, are critical components of a uh, safe and secure environment. But if you understand what I did there, uh, each one of those are now process owners. Each one of those are functional managers. E e each one of those are now budget managers for that particular priority. And so in terms of a strategic plans, in terms of budgeting and doing a prioritized budget, uh, those guys are going to be critical in this next budget season. So I'm now amped up from where I was this time last year in terms of the budget process and being able to have those guys who are down in the weeds uh, to be able to provide the best perspective on that. 
and, and then uh, in, in terms of all that and how that big machine works is the communications uh, folks. Oop. Is the communications folks. Uh, and here we have Katora Austin. Now that's much to the detriment of Coke. I actually pulled her from Coke Industries. She was the co corporate communications director there. She is now the corporate communications manager here. Uh, and so there wasn't a whole lot of learning experience that she needed to go through. I needed somebody who, was, who could get on the ground and run and she's able to do that for me. And then I have uh, a public information officer who is actually focused on external media and that is Kate Flavin. She's right here. And she certainly helps uh, shape the message and uh, supports the media uh, in, in terms of everything that we need to put out and the messages we need to answer uh, from the media. Uh, and those two working together is a dynamic duo. Underneath them is a support staff to help support that. Uh, matter of fact, 10, 10 feet from me, uh, by the way, I have a Twitter account. Uh, so uh, you can actually go to that and uh, uh, the person who helps me message uh, is 10 feet from me. Uh, so really what you're getting through uh, social media is uh, straight from our desk, uh, straight from me uh, to be able to support uh, providing information to, uh, to you or even to receive it and to make sure I'm kept up. Uh, a few of the 2016 accomplishments, these are just, I mean, this does not capture everything that was done. If I did that, it would really bore you to tears, not that this hasn't, uh, but a lot of what I have done and put up here I've already talked to you about, uh, but, but really uh, a lot of time was put in that law enforcement training center. It's one of the accomplishments we did this year. Uh, that was a 33-year-old problem that we solved uh, in the six months that I was here. Uh, not, not obviously not due to me. It was 12 actually, if you knew the en banc, 12 uh, politicians getting together and saying, hey, this is a great idea, this is what we need to do in solving that problem. Uh, but it was Bob Layton and I, you know, really working together to help make that happen. Uh, but, but that helped support a joint fire training facility agreement uh, where the city fire and the county fire uh, actually worked together uh, to help put a, a training schedule together each year, uh, think of that, you know, actually getting together and having a training workshop and, and talking about training for that year. Uh, what a great thing to, to provide uh, with the city support, uh, county working together to help get that done. Uh, we uh, actually, uh, one of the first things uh, Chairman Howell passed uh, this year was a comprehensive plan uh, and, uh, and then we got knee deep into all the reorganization issues. <clears throat> Further uh, accomplishments, ComCare Crisis Center, if any of you haven't been to that, you need to go to that. That is a huge capability we have in this organization. Tim, one of the champions of that, and helped get that put together. Uh, but that uh, has gone through a renovation this year to make it, uh, take it to that next level. Uh, but that is a huge capability in this. Uh, and if you think back to that mission statement, I tell you, it supports that very nicely. Uh, but also uh, combining MABCD, finally getting that and pushing that into the Reagan building. Reagan building is a huge accomplishment for us. Uh, the last three floors will hopefully be filled out uh, the rest of this year. But we have MABCD, MAPD over there. Uh, those uh, functions, joint functions, joint county and city functions working together uh, was a huge effort working between us and the city to make that happen. Elections with their uh, new elections equipment and what that's coming forward. A great uh, election cycle. We had uh, record turnout for early voting uh, for this election cycle. Uh, I, knew, I know I took advantage of it, uh, but man, uh, that was one job I know I wouldn't want to do when I went over there and actually watched uh, Tabitha's operation. What a phenomenal feat in getting that done. Uh, fast pass, uh, working between the city and the county, just be, provide easier access between uh, the two uh, entities. <clears throat> but also, I want to talk a little bit about the budget. <clears throat> you know, for me, the budget, uh, the 2017 budget was important. You know, the budget workshops, good cue, budget workshops this year uh, were huge in that 
uh, I identified two main areas I really needed to solve, and that is public safety issues, uh, as well as uh, uh, staff issues in terms of uh, performance and talent management that I talked about in the budget. And, and going down that a little further uh, is really about pay structure issues. Uh, you can look at our, our, our organization, you can look at the county, uh, the corrections department, you can look at uh, social workers, you can look at a lot of our critical functions out there uh, who if you look at each individual level in, in terms of their pay, they are off in terms of where they should be in terms of the, uh, where, where their peers are throughout uh, not only Kansas but the nation. And so that was something I really wanted to look at in terms of focusing on uh, is not so much a pay raise uh, to go into any organization and say everybody is going to get a 5% pay raise. That is horrible for an organization, especially when it comes to compression, especially when it comes to where, based off of your time and service, based off of where you are uh, on your pay grade uh, and how long you've been in that position. Um, the, the, the more you compress that and, and squash everybody together, it, it's going to affect that uh, organization in your, in your budget uh, and you'll never catch up. You're constantly throwing money at it to try to get people where they need to be, but by the very nature of doing that, it pulls that midpoint down and you're never going to get there. So the, the budget and what we focused on in this budget season is to actually find those individuals in the budget. Uh, and find where they are in that because there are corrections deputies who are 9% of where they should be. And so this finds that person and actually brings them back down to where they should be. Uh, not in 2017, couldn't do it, didn't have enough money to be able to support that. Uh, but potentially for 2018, that is something I'm going to look at to try to finish that off. But that actually gets that 9% down closer to where they need to be in terms of their midpoint. But that was something. Public safety was huge across the board. All right, across the board, across the board from from uh, from Mark Bennett and and DA uh, Sheriff uh, solving his issues, EMS solving their issues across the board uh, with a 38 percent increase in 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 demand, uh, but with a flat budget over the last uh, five to six years. And we just haven't been keeping up with the services that we need to provide. Uh, eight new EMS uh, <coughs> personnel hired for 2017, uh, two of those in critical care. Uh, 911 uh, operators, you've seen that in the newspapers, we're hiring nine more for this year. Uh, they asked for five, I gave them nine uh, because I saw it as a critical need to take care of overtime and also uh, the parking lot of demand in terms of uh, uh, calls that are put into a queue. I don't like queue. I like for somebody to be answered when they call. Uh, we're actually getting them hired early in this fiscal year to try to get that out there. Another ambulance to help support flexibility throughout the, the county and some new EMA uh, stations. So with that, I need to finish up because I'm getting the hook. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as you see, I don't brief by notes. I find it a hindrance. Uh, but that, uh, with that comes, I could talk for two or three hours and, and, and not get done. So with that, questions? I'll take the mic around if you'll just follow me. Uh, sir, your inspector general is, is called what and how does he or she function? It's an internal performance auditor. And with that, she is a certified um, internal performance auditor. She comes with the credential to be able to do that. And what I do is it's not a punitive thing. Uh, you know, in the military, we had the IG, we had congressionals, we had all this other stuff, uh, which really, in the end, uh, you know, if you're cleared, it's not punitive, but if you aren't, it's punitive. But for this, is I don't want it as a punitive uh, uh, way uh, to, be, to be able to appraise somebody's performance. I'm doing it as an organization uh, to send it in there to be able to, to allow her to go through her checklist, ask the right questions because she's trained to know who to ask and how to ask it, uh, look at the processes, look at those procedures to prov provide those efficiencies uh, to be able to help support that uh, particular agency do it better. Uh, there are many examples of, of some things that have been done uh, even uh, uh, in corrections over this last year in developing a kiosk to help support uh, how they 
uh, function. And so I only get into the depths of that, but, but that's basically what she is. She is an internal, internal performance auditor. Sir, thank you for being at the Pachyderm today. Um, when you're new in an organization, you're the best set of eyes to look for fraud, waste, and abuse. Did you see any wasteful or unwise spending uh, when, when you first took a look at things in the company? Um, the, you can always do things better. Uh, you know, I'm not going to knock the, the guy uh, prior to me um, in that. Uh, a fresh set of eyes is always good. A fresh set of eyes can always find efficiency um, because you know somebody who's had uh, a perspective of 24 years. The the, the challenge that I, I think that I wasn't expecting, which is endearing, which is uh, something that that uh, I need to develop uh, the skill set to, is to support the commissioners a little bit better. Uh, you know, the politicians uh, are doing, they are elected for a, a, a cause, they are elected for an ideology, they are elected, uh, but, but the best service I can provide them, and, and I think uh, Richard can actually speak to this a little bit, uh, I, I have to go in there and I have to say what they may not want to hear, you know, and, and trying to do that better and trying to support them better uh, to get where they want to go is, is a challenge. Uh, it's not that I didn't face that in, in supporting uh, five four stars, you know, in NATO uh, and the Secretary General, uh, but in this realm and, and supporting local government, you know, this is where lives, uh, you affect lives. You know, at the NATO level, you know, it, I was at a lofty position and, and, and really didn't see the, the work and end of that. Uh, here, it's supporting the, the commissioners better and being able to communicate with them a little bit better. Uh, but also the citizens and the stakeholders and, and, and trying to support that a lot better, I think, uh, has been something I've, I've worked hard at. All right. Michael Stoll, let's Thanks. give him a big hand. Here's a little thank you card for you. Oh, thank you. Some of my Good. favorite leaders. Good. Good. Glad to have you here. Uh, got that got used to seeing things a certain way or wanting things a, so for me I'm coming in I want it this way and I see things different the one thing I hate as a county manager uh, I will say the one thing I hate as a county manager is when a staffer tells me that's how we've always done it uh, and you've probably heard that you've seen it not only in in, in your organizations uh, but so for me that begs me to ask that next question so why don't we do it differently or is there a better way to do it uh, and uh, you know just that, this week we've had like three cases of that where uh, this is how we've always done it it's just the best way best thing best da, 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 da. Uh, you know that's just for me that just asks, begs me to ask that next question and follow up and try to figure that out policy change this the organization change itself is going to cause change getting managers down there. See, as a manager, when you have 30 different hot topics, there is no way as a manager I can go, oh, okay, let me look at all those hot topics. 30 hot topics. Let me concentrate on each one that goes, you know, do the due diligence. There's just no way that that's going to happen. What this functional design gives me is I've got four managers now who focus on those 30 hot topics, divide them up, concentrate on those, and then they bring to me those truly hot topic priorities that, that I need to focus on. Or if I just want to focus on it, I'll ask them to bring it to me. But either way now, I've got somebody, a, a professional that can actually get down. It also does something else for me. It gives me professional development. So instead of nine department heads, now I have four functional managers, potential assistant county manager, deputy county manager, where those department heads now can aspire to be that next level and, and be able to get to a executive managerial level that they may have never have been able to get to before. And it gives me that capability to provide that service. Right here. We've read the paper about uh, potential fraud that uh, over half a million dollars. Has that been resolved or can you speak to that at all? I, I can't. <clears throat> Good question. Uh, I can't speak to um, the investigation side of it uh, because I would love to be able to tell you uh, everything that, that we have done since, but I don't want uh, to hinder an investigation that by me showing our cards or, or, or telling you something that could potentially affect behavior of a criminal element out there. 
What I can tell you is, I can't wait to tell you what we have done and how that happened. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think for, for all organizations, this is a different uh, time and uh, age. I mean, in terms of a digital environment and criminal elements that are out there, they're very, very savvy, very sophisticated. Uh, nobody is safe. It's just uh, you need to provide a capability to, to, to be able to support uh, stopping that. Um, but, uh, but, but you got to stay on your toes. I look forward to maybe sharing uh, uh, best practices to help other organizations uh, to get better at that. Uh, but I can't wait for the investigation to get over to be able to talk a little bit more about it. Uh, but just know that there are some, uh, the FBI is all over it um, and there are some really uh, sharp, sharp cookies out there uh, who are, are working on this right now. Last question here. Manager, what has been your biggest surprise? You I get that so much. You, you actually, that last uh, where you were in there was the biggest. Surprise. There's three. <laughs> I may change my answer, but uh, no, I told them, and that I think that where you were, I said my biggest uh, my biggest challenge coming in here from 33 years in the military is trying to figure out what to wear every day. So I'm like, man, I've got. A, I, you know, I've, I've had uh, ACUs, I had BDUs, I always knew what I was going to wear the next day, but now I've got to match and put on a suit and all that kind of thing. Uh, I, I will say, uh, for, for me, uh, I love doing what I do. I, I, love, I love serving, I love being a manager. I've, I've just had, God has blessed me with a knack, not only a, a beautiful, loving wife, but uh, but he's given me talents uh, in the leadership realm and managerial realm that I love using. Uh, I, love, uh, I love talking, I love, uh, I love uh, communicating, uh, but, uh, but you know, I think uh, for me, uh, just being here and, and, and being able to support uh, Sedgwick County and make it a better place is, is really uh, something that has been fascinating. The, the, the challenge that I, I think that I wasn't expecting, which is endearing, which is, uh, something that, that uh, I need to develop uh, the skill set to is to support the commissioners a little bit better. Uh, you know, the politicians uh, are doing, they are elected for a, a, a cause, they are elected for an ideology, they are elected, uh, but, but the best service I can provide them, and, and I think uh, Richard can actually speak to this a little bit, uh, I, I have to go in there and I have to say what they may not want to hear, you know, and, and trying to do that better and trying to support them better uh, to get where they want to go is, is a challenge. Uh, it's not that I didn't face that in, in supporting uh, five four stars, you know, in NATO uh, and the Secretary General, uh, but in this realm and in, in supporting local government, you know, this is where lives, uh, you affect lives. You know, at the NATO level, you know, it, I was at a lofty position and, and, and really didn't see the, the work and end of that. Uh, here, it's supporting the, the commissioners better and being able to communicate with them a little bit better, uh, but also the citizens and the stakeholders and, and, and trying to support that a lot better, I think, uh, has been something I've, I've worked hard at. All right. Michael Stoll, let's give him a big hand. Here's a little thank you card for you. Oh, thank you.